right then. I'm going to start with the unboxing of this Synology 1621 Plus. Um, I currently already own a Synology, but it has run out of disk space and is very many years old. So I have decided to go ahead and buy a replacement. What I have here is the 1621, which is a six bay, uh, six bay box with a four core CPU, which is significantly better than the old one, which I think was a DS420 with a Atom or Celeron or something like that. Um, so yeah, I've gone ahead, I got this. I've got two uh, eight terabyte drives to go in this to start with. I'm gonna put another two in it next week once I have ordered them. Um, but oh, I didn't want to get them from the same batch just in case. So let's go ahead, let's get this unboxed and then I'm gonna go through how I actually configure it. Um, I've got a few different things like um, setting up the RAID, setting up sort of external access to it, installing things like tail scale on here as well, I think, um, getting Plex up and running, all that sort of thing. So we'll get on and do that now. So let's get this box opened. So this is the first time I've opened it. I have not opened this yet myself, so here we go. So we start with this little box here, a little quick installation guide. I don't imagine we'll be reading much of that. Take that little bit of packaging out. And then we can lift out the actual, the actual mass. Let's put the bits back in the box. Okay. So here we have it, our Synology 1621 Plus. And we just need to get it out of this wrapping. A Synology 1621 Plus then. So on the front, six ports, uh, power button, lights for the four LAN ports that are on the back, and a status and an alert light. Spin it around and have a little look on the back. We've got four USB ports, we've got two, US uh, sorry, four network ports, one gig network ports, two USB-C ports, two eSATAs, and a PCI slot, as well as a little slot for the power. So, not a lot really to to talk about on the back there. We've got a little install guide there. And in this box, it comes with a network cable, two network cables, a um, little, uh, little set of keys, some hard drive mounting screws, and a UK plug. But I imagine if you are not in the UK, you will get an appropriate plug. So next step, let's get this thing plugged in. Right, so I've plugged it into the power, I've plugged it into my network, and I have got its uh, setup interface open in my web browser. So, first thing for us to do is just follow through these instructions, and we're going to install the latest version of DSM, and can acknowledge that all the data on the two disks I've put into it will be erased. Now this might take, according to this, 10 minutes, so I'll probably zoom through some of this. Main thing that I have noticed already it's quite loud when I first turned it on. I got a big puff of air and then it's calmed down a bit, but um, it, it's certainly loud and there's a constant fan going on this one at least. It doesn't matter too much for me. I'm not going to be keeping it in my um, in my room here. I'm going to put it around with all my other network bits uh, in the utility area. Um, so that will go there and um, we won't worry too much about it. Now, um, we need to just sit back and wait, so we'll just sit here. Right, so it's now just finished that, and now it says restarting, so it's going to turn off and on again, I assume, and then in a moment, it's going to jump into life. Now, if my um, experience with Synology is anything to go by, it's not going to take 9 minutes and 40 seconds, it's going to be up here probably in about 20 seconds. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. The lights have all gone off now, so we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. While I was, um, when I was installing it, I put in the two drives. It's got the little keys are for just locking in the individual hard drive caddies into the front. There's no screws necessary. It does come with some screws, presumably for SSDs and things like that. But for a normal three and a half inch uh, disc, just, uh, just slide it into the caddy, stick the two little side things into it, and um, away it goes. But I can show you. So here's an empty one. So um, on this one, you've got these little side pieces here. You just pull these out like so. Put your drive in that slot, then you pop these back in and they line up with the holes in the side of the hard drive. And then when you're done, 
it can just be inserted straight back into the Synology itself. Now, I'll be installing two more drives into there in the next couple of days. Um, these two, uh, I'm gonna, I'll start the copy on tonight of getting the data over from my old, my old NAS. Um, and then, uh, yeah, but we'll just sit here while this reboots. Right, things have moved on a little bit now. We are now installing and launching the built-in packages. Um, I don't know what those packages are, and I'm not even sure whether this is going to come pre-installed with DSM-7, the latest operating system from Synology, or DSM-6. Nope, there we go. Welcome to DSM-7. Now, I've never done this before, so uh, let's just go through this. All right, device name, I'm just gonna call it, um, we'll call it Synology NAS. Uh, administrator account will be my name. I'm going to just type in a password there. Yeah, like so. That's new. Previously, I remember, seem to remember the old administrator accounts always were called um, were called admin, and you create new ones. So this is obviously a little bit more secure. Now we want this to install important updates only. That's fine. There's nothing particularly um, too much of a problem. Now it says, do I have a Synology account to receive more benefits? I don't benefits. Yeah, okay. I'll I'll do it if this works. Uh, right, let's just go through this little process. And this is quite straightforward. So I've already got an account. That looks like it worked. That's nice. Access your NAS from anywhere. Free service access is noted via a custom secure address and access me files uh, wherever you are. I'm just going to skip that for now. I don't want to set that up quite yet. And I'm not going to enable um, the new Active Insights. I don't know anything about it yet. And Config Backup, um, I am also not going to enable because I don't know what it is. So here we go. This is our uh, new DSM-7 and lovely new wallpaper. I quite like that. Um, so let's go ahead and do what it says and create our first storage pool. We can just follow this wizard, presumably. I'm going to use Synology Hybrid RAID. Um, I'm just going to call this um, the storage pool. Oh, it says optional. We'll just leave that blank. I'm going to include both my two drives. I can hear the whole drive just shaking my desk. Uh, I'm going to skip the drive check for now for the purposes of this. Um, we'll just set this to the maximum size for now. Um, and do we want to use BTRFS or EXT4? We'll stick with uh, BTRFS because that will give us snapshotting, I believe, which would be quite nice. So let's go ahead and apply those changes. Certainly making a little bit of noise next to me here. So our volume one is up and healthy and it's got seven TB of space. Now that's an extra two terabytes on top of what's on my current NAS. So at least I can copy everything over and when I have more drives, I'll just be adding more space as well as um, I imagine one of the new drives I'm gonna put in, I'll probably keep in as a, as a hot spec. I don't really need that much storage, but the difference in price between a sort of six terabyte and an eight terabyte drive is marginal. So what do we do now, I suppose, is the question. We kind of have a little look around and see what we've got. So um, shared folders, we haven't got any yet. File services, uh, we've got the SMB service enabled. We haven't got the AFP service. We haven't got NFS and nothing else is enabled. That's okay by me. Using groups, uh, we've got an admin account and a guest account, both disabled by default. That's nice, that's fine. We don't need to worry about them. Um, the secure sign-in service, Presumably, this is mentioned here, two-factor auth, that would be good. I'll set all that up later. Quick connect again, we'll come back to that, but um, I will probably look at setting up something like that at some point. But everything here is looking looking good. We've got our network interface. We're only using the first one at the moment on um, my main network. Um, I could set these up into a bond, um, but I'm... This isn't currently plugged into a managed oh, it is, but um, I'm not going to configure on this switch right now. So I'll do that um, when it's in its final location connected to my main switch. So what else do we have? Um, nothing really, really, I don't think there's much we need to worry about in there. This is feeling quite snappy though, which is nice. So let's go ahead and look in the package center. Yeah, I've agreed to those terms. I don't know what they are. And I wonder how many have read them. Probably not many. So let's see what packages do we want to install. Well, the main package that I use quite a lot 
is the Synology Drive service, which is a bit like Google Drive. So let's find that. Synology Office, Synology Mail Plus, no. Is it inside Synology Office perhaps now? Or am I just being blind? Let me search. Drive, Synology Drive server, there we go. Let's go ahead, install that package. We need these two, yeah, go ahead and install those for me. I'll quickly get on and download these. I think it's just gonna work its way through those settings on its own. The nice thing um, about the Synology system is the, the range of packages that they provide out of the box. Um, I'm always impressed by it. Um, they are an, a nice collection of products and okay, they're not quite up to the same level in some places as things like Google Docs or even and obviously Office, Office 365 or Microsoft 365, but they're, they're a good contender. They're not bad for the sort of thing I'm gonna be using this for. Um, my primary use case is just to store my my files really. Um, I'm going to use it for Plex. Um, I recently bought a um, a photography course online, um, and it was four different uh, MP4 files, I think. And I put them in the Plex on the old server, and every time I pressed play, it just hung and hung and hung um, and didn't actually start playing, which was really painful. But I imagine that's to do with the CPU that was in the old Synology, which wasn't. Um, up to it. So I'll go ahead and install, uh, install Plex on here too. Let's go and do that now. Um, I believe Plex may well be listed in here um, as an option, although maybe it's not anywhere it used to be. Yeah, it is here, but it's listed as beta. So what we'll do is we're going to go to Plex, Plex's website. Um, we will go to, I don't know, way around here. Let's just go down to download Plex Media Server. We're going to select the Synology DSM-7 package, choose package, and we're going to probably want the Intel 64-bit package because we have a Intel... Oh, no, we don't have an Intel, do we? We have a, a different one. We have... You know, let's just try and install this. Manual install, select a file. Um, we'll go to our downloads folder and we will select Plex Media Server and we'll just see what it says. Now this is going to upload it from my computers, probably by third party developers, um, normal installation using a Plex claim token. Well, we can get a Plex claim token straight away. Um, we'll copy the code below and paste it into the resting app. Well, it just says code. Uh, wasn't terribly helpful was it and it didn't get copied to my clipboard so I guess we'll just not worry about that um, logs you can use the internal storage and okay let's get on with it now that's a new change uh, when you used to install Plex it didn't ask you any of those things you never had option to use the claim code and there was nothing else really there now if Plex can access your media verify okay um, that's fine I can check that in a minute so let's go and see is this running that was fast um, and now we're going to sign in using our sort of single sign on Plex have actually got this got this working now which is quite nice and that seems to be running nicely so now our Plex is running I'll work on copying over some data in a minute um, let's just check the Google, uh, not Google Drive the Sony Drive is working I'm not gonna have any data in here yet, but yeah, this is looking looking pretty pretty rapid as well, which is which is nice to see. So that's pretty much it. That's all we need to do. I now my next job is to relocate this NAS somewhere else in the house, start a large-ish copy over from the old NAS, which will take some time. I would imagine, and that will be it. But I will probably check in again with you. Um, maybe subscribe, link, like, click the bell, do all you need to do, um, and I may post another video with more information soon. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, and uh, like and subscribe. Bye bye.